Okay, so the certification ECU, the skipper of the boat, the commanding officer, he's happy. He told the door oscillator, one of his subordinate officers, hey, start making some, some noise, see if it fobs out there, the fob responds back. It is the right fob for that vehicle. So now the skipper says, hey, ask him if it a secret code, he knows a secret code, so now the skipper's happy. So that skipper then gets with one of his higher end, keeping with the submarine analogy here, the higher end officer, the commander of the boat, if you will, the cob, as it's known in the submarine world, and that is the, the lock or the code, the ID code box. So the ID code box, like a lock box full of electronic keys or files, I should say, the ID code box, a.k.a. in a Prius, known as the transponder key ECU. Or in the service manual, it may, or I should say in the tech stream, it's called the immobilizer ECU. So whatever it's called, it's the commander of the boat. It's not the head, it's not the commanding officer, but it is the chief enlisted guy. And he's going to have some other modules do their thing once he's got the secret code from the captain. So the captain says, we're good, hey, ID code box, do your thing. That's a code that's through a LIN bus, local interface network, and that's not a CAN bus, so we can't read these information messages, but we just know there's a square wave happening on that LIN bus between certification ECU and the ID code box. The ID code box says, all right, I see the right key ID, now I'm going to ask um, the steering lock ECU, that's going to keep the steering wheel locked on a Camry, and or the ECM, that's for engine starting, in the case of a hybrid, also the hybrid ECU. And that's going to give power to those big relays they call contactors in the electrical world to make the high voltage battery pack, boom be connected online and do its thing. So the high voltage battery pack relays, the contactors in the back of the car, when you hear them go click, 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 and they power up and the ready light comes on the dash, or in a conventional car, the engine starting, actually the hybrid both, the engine starting if it needs to, and the high voltage battery pack in the back, it has to come online. Those two devices are gonna get the G codes we talked about from the ID box. So the ID box is gonna say, hey, I need some starting and the ECM and the hybrid ECUs will say, what's the G code guy? And so the commander of the boat, the head uh, a chief petty officer, if you will, he's gonna say, here's the ID code for chuts and such for starting, which is the G code. And for the steering lock module, another subordinate of the, the master chief here, the cob, the commander of the boat, he's gonna ask for, hey, what's the code for unlocking the steering column? And the the ID code box is going to respond back and say, here's the L code. Once the L code's been received and satisfied by the steering lock ECU, the steering column is unlocked and a switch is activated that says it is indeed unlocked. If we don't see that input that the switch uh, is, is connected and the steering column truly unlocked, or at least it thinks it's not unlocked, then you don't get the L code back to the ID cow box, and it won't give that other message I talked about to the powertrain or the hybrid ECU. It won't let the engine ready up or start in a conventional engine. So a lot of stuff is going on with these L codes for locking the steering column, G codes for letting the engine start or the, and or the hybrid battery pack come online. That's all done by that ID code box, aka immobilizer ECU or transponder key ECU known in the Prius service manual. All right, as we go around the circle of modules in this very complex system clockwise, from the ECM, we see the main body ECU or the body control module. Now, its function is to basically be like an ignition switch as far as making relays turn on to do the job of powering up fuses when we, with a normal car in the past, but it just turned the key on and had a bunch of circuits then be closed to go to maxi fuses. In this case, relays close because the BCM told them to close. So a message, you see the dotted line of CAN with the key ID from that certification ECU, skipper of the boat here. When he's happy with the vehicle ID and the key ID, he transmits that information also to the BCM. 
Now, if you have a Toyota hybrid Prius, you have a Prius, it has a little different method of turning the switches on, if you will, to power up accessory and, and uh, the ignition relays. And it uses, instead of the BCM to do that job, it uses something called a power source ECU. So you see it say, also known as, AKA, power source ECU. That guy has to also work or you don't have any power for the things to actually function, ignition, fuel injection, things like that. So all this has to work together. Now, I mentioned the door oscillator, and I should have actually stopped right there and said that's just to get into the car. Once you're in the car, other oscillators to the right, you see front room oscillator and rear room oscillator. The vehicle's oscillators internal, which have a limited range, about three feet. In other words, you're not going to get outside the vehicle, you're not going to get this fob to light up the key ID to the room oscillators inside the vehicle. Not, it's not that kind of range for that low frequency signal. This is just for the door oscillator when you got to close the door to get in the car. Once you slide in the car, then the room oscillators in that console or in the back see the smart fob and they then give the rest of that information to the certification ECU. So one oscillator lets you in the vehicle using the vehicle ID. Hey, are you talking to me? And the key ID, what's the password? back and forth between the oscillator and this guy. And then once you get in the car, same thing happens between the room oscillators and the smart fob for actually starting the vehicle. Now at the very bottom of the page, we see those smart fobs with the LEDs built into them. Low frequency LF, that's the 134 kilohertz of the oscillators talking back and forth to this guy. And then RF, you see that? That's 315 megahertz, so that's the low end of the UHF band, that's what communicates with that tuner slash electrical key antenna. So up in that sail panel of that the Camry picture we saw a second ago, there's this module that acts as the antenna and the receiver, if you will, the remote keyless entry, a lot of cars, what they would call it, when you actually hit the fob lock or unlock from across the parking lot. So that's how that functionality occurs with both the uh, vehicle ID and the key ID to unlock or lock the vehicle. A lot of stuff going on. Let's talk about some things that could go wrong.